Hi guys, 18 Dap here and welcome to this match day preview. It's Doncaster Rovers versus Oxford at the Keep Motor Stadium on New Year's Day. Let's get the video started. <laughs> So guys, this is getting uploaded a couple of days before the new year, so first things first, I want to wish you a happy new year and all the best for 2020. If you're an existing subscriber, thank you for returning. If you're new to the channel and this is the video that's brought you here, welcome to my channel. And this is the format that we go through match previews, we do previous meetings, current form, player focus, so we look at a Doncaster Rovers player. My opinion on the one to watch for the opposition, in this case Oxford, and then me and the family have got predictions league, so we'll give a quick update on that, and then I give my score prediction for the game at the very end. So without further ado, on to previous meetings. Oxford have had the better of the meetings between the two teams. Donny have won four, Oxford have won nine, and we've shared the spoils six times. And over the last five games, I always go back five games, um, Oxford much much better three wins for Oxford and then two draws so back to the 17-18 season Oxford won both of those games by a single goal one nil home and away um, in the 18-19 season Rovers got slightly better and it was two 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 draws um, and then earlier on this season Oxford absolutely battered us three nil at their place Hopefully, it's not a repeat of that on New Year's Day. Current form may may say that it could be another battering. Um, Donny, very hit and miss over the past couple of months. We're screaming out for a striker. We're screaming out for creative midfielders. It is going to be a big, big January for Darren Moore. Um, I'm not one for calling for a manager's head. I think he needs a bit of time to build a squad. He's had about a third of a transfer window, so I think he needs this transfer window and potentially next before we can actually see a proper squad getting assembled by Darren. But that doesn't stop us getting frustrated with the performances and the results on the pitch at the minute. And as you can see, very inconsistent. Two draws, two defeats, a win in the last five. Oxford look like they're in fantastic form at the minute. One defeat in the last five, a draw, and then three wins. Rovers had a very, very impressive performance, a very impressive display against Peterborough on Boxing Day. And a lot of fans thought, hey, up, here we go. We might have turned a corner, we're back to what as early season form. Um, but then Sunday, a very familiar feeling where a team came with a plan, executed that plan extremely well. Um, put pressure on us when we had the ball, didn't give us any sort of space or a chance to play and we were out for and it's another team that's come and done a job on us and gone away with the three points. So as I mentioned earlier, January recruitment is huge. If we get a team coming down and stopping us from playing, we need those players to be able to adapt to that kind of play and still get something out of the game and we just don't have that at the minute. Oxford, as I said, ooh, nearly knocked my laptop over. As I said, uh, a run of three wins that has pushed them into second in the table. So it's going to be a tough game. Um, but they've not been scoring many. In the last five, they've only scored five um, and they've only conceded one. So not scoring many, not conceding either. So could be a tighter game than the one earlier in the season. On to player focus. I am moving on to the younger players in the Rovers squad, so we're with Lirak Hassani. Um, no appearances this season, he made a couple last season and he looked decent. He's had an extension of his contract in November time, so the club must see something in him um, or a bright future in him. And like I say, he got given the opportunity last season, a couple of games, not a lot of time on in them games, but he looked steady, he looked confident. Um, and for me, he's a, he's a centre, centre defensive midfielder um, and after recent performances from Gomez, Sheaf is, is OK, his, his long range passing is unreal but he gives the ball away far too much, short passes lets him down and against Sunderland, Gomez didn't break anything down 
um, gave the ball away far too much. He looked out of his depth. I don't like slagging players off for me. We should be getting behind him. Um, but I just couldn't work out how he managed to stay on the pitch for 90 minutes. A lot of the problems we had against Sunderland came from either him, Halliday didn't have a good game, um, and John at left-back didn't have a good game, and we, we struggled struggled with those those three um, underperforming. But for me, if if Gomez and Sheaf are underperforming, give one of the young lads a chance and say, right, grab it, this is your opportunity. Grab it with both hands, show us what you can do. They can't look more out of depth than what, than what Gomez did against Sunderland. Hopefully the performance comes against Oxford, because um, I think Gomez has looked decent in spells. Sunderland didn't fill me with any confidence at all. So hopefully Lirak gets an opportunity this season. Moving on to the one to watch for Oxford, I have gone with Matty Taylor, Oxford's number nine, 14 appearances, six goals. Matty, as I just mentioned, six league goals this season, and he is Oxford's second top scorer across all competitions. Um, I believe Henry is top scorer, um, but New Year's Day, Donny's defence will have a tough time against both him, James Henry, and Fosu Henry. If they're firing on all cylinders on New Year's Day, I fear for our results, put it that way. Three very, very good players. Um, it's going to be a tough time. Hopefully, they overindulge over the New Year and they're feeling a bit rough. We can, we can hope. Um, but yeah, one to watch for Oxford. I'm going with Matty Taylor. Predictions league table, so against Sunderland, all of the family went for Rovers wins, so no points awarded to any of us. The way that it works, if you are new, if we get the scoreline absolutely spot on, we get three points. If we get the result or the outcome right, but not the scoreline, we get one point. And if we get it completely wrong, we get no points. And the table looks like this. So Max and myself joint top with ten points, Chris in third on seven points, and my dad in fourth on six but things can change very very quickly but to be fair they stayed like this for pretty much the whole season we're not very good at predicting score lines basically if I predict that we're, we're gonna lose we'll end up winning if I predict that we're gonna win we end up losing that's how it's been going so far this season um, and hopefully that theme continues because with our current form um, the players that we've got and Oxford's current form, looking at it all, the only outcome I can see is, unfortunately, an Oxford victory and I'm going for 1-0 to Oxford. I hope I'm wrong. We need to start winning games um, and climbing the League One table, but with current form and the way the feeling is around the club at the minute, can't see anything else other than a defeat. Hope I'm wrong. I hope I am wrong. And that's it for this vlog. I'm going to leave it here. So if you've enjoyed it, big thumbs up for us, please. Comments in the section down below. Um, subscribe if you haven't already. As I mentioned in other videos, when we get to 2,000 subscribers, there will be a giveaway. Um, and as always, thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one.